Good morning everyone, Janie here and welcome back to my garden. I am sitting here in the shade by my oak tree garden bed. It's eight o'clock in the morning and it's already hot. You can tell it's gonna be a warm day. So I'm trying to stay cool and sit in the shade, um, but I'm ready to work today. Again, I am in this oak tree garden bed. I am so almost done, you guys. I hope you're not getting too bored of all of the me just working on this one garden bed, but I'm close. I just have to finish the irrigation and the mulch and then I can be done with this garden bed. So it's been fun to be fun to work on. I usually never come over to this side of my house. I live on a corner lot and this is all the way around in the corner. So it's been kind of fun to work over here and see everybody who walks by on this street and, um, and drives by, but I'm kind of ready to be done. <laughs> I have a lot of other projects that I want to get started on. So today I wanted to do a video on irrigation, um, drip irrigation. And I, you know, as the title says, it's an amateur's guide for amateurs. I am not a professional. I've only been gardening for about three years now, but I feel pretty confident with drip irrigation now at this point because I've done it so many times in my own garden because I do live in Northern California, zone 9B, and we are so hot and we are so dry here. So we rely on drip irrigation. There's no way I would be able to keep up with hand watering. Um, so I feel pretty confident with it. Uh, in the beginning, I was so confused. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know how to do anything. And um, you know, I watched all the videos and all the tutorials and I even went so far as to look at the irrigation company websites and just look at the products they had just so I could familiar familiarize myself with the names of you know the emitters or the tubing or anything like that so um, it, it's a lot it's a lot to think about and it's a lot to understand so don't feel bad if you don't understand all of it so uh, today I wanted to take you guys around and I wanted to show you really in detail on on how I am going to add uh, irrigation to this garden bed. This morning already, I've taken out all the old irrigation, and a couple days ago, I took out all the old irrigation in my neighbor's yard, so I have to do both today. And I'm just gonna take you through, take you through my thought process and why I'm choosing which option of the irrigation. So if you guys already know how to do drip, then this video is probably not for you unless you just wanna watch you know, a fun vlog. Um, but hopefully, if you guys are still confused with irrigation, this will kind of help you out a little bit. Okay, before I get started, I just wanted to let you guys know that this video is going to be focused on adding or changing an existing drip system, just the tubing and the emitters and stuff like that. If you guys want to start a whole new drip system from scratch, well, for one thing, if you're gonna add it to like your sprinkler system, that's kind of a big job. That's, um, you know, that that's very complicated. And we ended up just hiring a an irrigation landscaper or an irrig irrigation contractor. And we were super, super happy with that. We wanted an extra zone in our backyard so that we could water different plants on different um, different timings and stuff like that. You can also add from scratch a new drip system onto a faucet with you know the faucet connector and an adapter and a timer and everything like that. And there's a lot of good videos on YouTube. Laura from Garden Answer has a really good video on it. I do have to say I tried that before and I had that before we added the extra zone in my backyard and I actually stop that. I actually, you know, cut that out and changed it because I could not get it to stop leaking. It, you know, it worked, it watered the plants, it did what it was supposed to do, but just the connection to the faucet, it, I just, it didn't matter what I did, it just kept leaking. It was too much for the faucet. Um, so I kind of gave up on that, but that is a good option. If that's the only option you have, um, just be prepared for it to start leaking. I mean, we even did like the plumber's tape and you know, all that kind of stuff and it just didn't really work for us. Um, so anyway, so this video is just going to be focused on changing kind of the layout like if you plant a new garden bed like I did how to change your irrigation layout how to add to it or how to change it so that it works for your new setup with your plants all right so sorry about the shadow I the sun is directly behind me and I cannot get in a spot where I won't be you know <laughs> messing the shot with the shadow um, and it's hard to see because everything's really dirty, but here is my quarter inch drip tubing. It goes underneath the fence and then it connects to my drip system that's in my backyard here. Um, so this is where uh, everything comes for my this, this part of my yard. This is outside of my fence. This is my side yard. Um, you know, like I said, I live on a corner lot and it's around the corner uh, from my front yard. So this is where my 
initial starting point is going to be. So when you guys start thinking about dris drip system, you have to think that there's two sizes of tubing. There's, well, there's actually three. There's the big size and there's the little size. For the big size, you can choose half inch or three quarters inch, right? Um, and then for the little size, it's, it's a quarter inch, okay? So I have a half inch drip tubing right here. That's what my whole system runs off of. Um, if you have a bigger house, you might have three quarters inch, but I feel like half inch is a little bit more common, at least if you live in like my size house, if you live in suburbia. So half inch drip tubing is what you're getting started with and you want most of your drip to be on half inch because half inch is going to be able to get more water a longer distance as opposed to a quarter inch which is smaller and it's only going to be able to go so far. So you're limited for how much tubing you have on each zone because there's only so much water pressure from the pump. So you want to have as much half inch as possible and then just a little bit of quarter inch wherever you go. So with the half inch, you have two options of tubing that you can get. You can get just the regular tubing, right? And so this is called heavy duty half inch drip tubing. It's just black drip tubing. It has no holes in it. And this is gonna take your water from one place to another place, right? So this is kind of the basic stuff. And then this stuff is a little bit more advanced. This is called half inch emitter tubing. And so what this has, let's see if I can find a hole. There we go. This has holes in it. And for this one, it has holes every 18 inches. Do you guys see that right there? 18 inch emitter spacing, and it's 0.9 gallons per hour for every hole. So every 18 inches, there's a hole along this half inch drip tubing. And when the system turns on, water is gonna come out about a gallon per hour rate is gonna come out of these holes and it's gonna water your plants. So depending on what your landscape looks like, you know, and what your situation is, you guys can choose one or the other. If you have something like this, then you might not need to add um, extra emitters and extra quarter inch drip tubing, and it might make your life just a little bit easier just to run a bunch of this all around the area. Now, this is not gonna work for my oak tree garden bed because I live in Northern California. This is a California native oak, and California native oaks do not like water. So everything I've planted in this garden bed is drought tolerant, low water, and I did that on purpose because I'm trying to get as little water as possible, I'm trying to use as little water as possible in this garden bed. So if I used the emitter half inch drip tubing to water all of these plants, I would probably have some extra holes that weren't watering anything. So it would be kind of like wasting water, using too much water for this garden bed, and that's the opposite of what I want in this garden bed. So what I'm planning to use, so let me back up a little bit. In my front yard where I don't have an oak tree and I don't really care about that and I have plants you know, packed in everywhere, this would be a better option for me because I can just kind of throw it all around and it's gonna water everything. I actually have this in my crepe myrtle garden bed um, in the front yard because I have plants like literally every square inch and it does a really, really good job. So in this garden bed where I'm trying to save water, I am planning to put just the regular half inch drip tubing and I'm gonna snake it around and then off of this, I'm gonna attach the quarter inch drip and then I'm gonna put an emitter on each end of that going to each specific plant. So the only location for water to come out of my drip tubing is going to be feeding a specific plant. So that is, that is my way of saving as much water as possible and limiting the amount of water that's going into this garden bed and into the oak tree roots. Um, that's, that's how you would do it with a drip system. Okay, so now that I know what type of tr uh, half inch or the big drip tubing I'm gonna use, I have to think about how I'm gonna connect it. And in my situation right here, I cut it off, so I know I wanna connect it end to end like that. If you just want to add to a, an existing drip system and you don't wanna cut it off like that, you can tee it off like that with a different type of coupler. I'll show you guys that in a second. Um, but, so I am going to attach it at the end like that, like this, just to extend what I already have and so what I'm gonna do what you would have to do is you would have to go to the store like Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace or uh, your local garden center and you have to get what are called couplers and there's two different type of couplers there are 
quarter inch couplers for the quarter inch drip tubing and then there are half inch or three quarter inch couplers for the half inch or three quarter inch drip tubing. So this is the half inch coupler and this is the straight coupler and this is what I would use to connect this existing tubing to this new tubing and it would connect it and it would make it basically as one continuous drip tube. Now if I wanted to turn it around a corner I would use a corner coupler like that if I wanted if I wanted this drip tubing to go off this way um, and then if I wanted to if this just continued on and I didn't actually cut it off I could just cut it and I could put one in here I could continue on with whatever tubing I didn't want to take off and then I could put my new tubing on the T like that and I could just start it you start a new line which I will be doing that a little bit in this garden bed as well but for this situation right here I'm just going to use a straight coupler and I'm going to connect my new tubing to my old tubing. All right. Now, here's one thing I will say. These are so hard to connect. <laughs> I cannot do them very well at all. And I found the easiest thing is if you kind of just twist it back and forth, kind of just rock it in. That's the easiest way to do it. I did have somebody tell me at Home Depot once that you can take a... Uh, like a lighter and, and heat up the end and that will make it a little bit loose. Um, I, I don't know, I don't wanna to totally melt the rubber, so I never really do that. I kinda of just, just try and squeeze it on and rock it back and forth like that. Okay, so you can see this old tubing is now connected to this new tubing and now when my drip system turns on, the water's gonna come all the way through and go all the way down this drip tube to wherever I end up placing it. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this out all over, I'm gonna snake it all around my garden bed right now. Okay, so all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna snake this quarter inch drip tubing all throughout this garden bed. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to come super close to the plants. It just has to be close enough that I can attach a quarter inch drip tubing to the half inch drip tubing so I can get that quarter inch in a relatively short distance to the plant uh, to water this specific plant. So for this, I'm just trying to get this through, you know, um, as quickly as possible, basically. <laughs> I'm also gonna use these landscape stakes to keep the tubing where I want it. You can see this tubing wants to kind of go its own way. So these are really important to have. And I just get these in bulk off of Amazon. Um, I think it's the cheapest, the most cost-effective way to do it. And I use these things all the time. So I just go through and I just push it down and that's going to keep the landscape tubing where I want it, where I want it to stay. And then after I'm done laying all this out, I'll come in with mulch and I'll cover the mulch. I'll cover this with mulch. That's also why I like using the black because I use black mulch and it just kind of, um, it camouflages everything. Okay, so hopefully what you can see is I connected it with a straight coupler right there and then I went all the way through, there's my rubber mallet, looped it around here, brought it back around here. So you can see I'm still kind of far away from these plants but it doesn't matter because I'm going to come in with quarter inch, the small drip tubing, quarter inch drip tubing and do an emitter to every single plant that I have here. All the way around here, all the way around here coming back over to where we started, and then here's the end of my tube right there. Now, you can fold this in half. Let me show you guys. The way to stop tubing, okay, let me set the camera up, hold on. 
Okay, so here is the end of my drip tubing. I have it all laid out in my garden bed and there's two ways to end uh, a, a tubing, a, a half inch tubing. You can either stop it, pinch it off, or you can connect it to an, an existing tube. So if I just wanted to stop it, if I just wanted to do one straight line, what I would do is I would take this little thingy. This is called like a figure eight stopper and I would slide one of the holes onto the half inch strip tubing and then I would actually bend the quarter inch strip tubing, completely bend it in half and then slide the end into the other hole. And this is how you stop. This is how you end a half inch drip tubing. There's a whole nother technique that we use for quarter inch strip tubing, but this is what they do for half inch. They just clip it in half or, or fold it in half like this. And then if you wanted to remove it, all you do is go like that and then you can take the whole thing off and then that tube is open again. And obviously if you leave this on for a couple years in the heat, it's going to get a uh, kink in the rubber tubing, so you might as well just cut it off and start all over again. But that is one way to stop um, to stop up the tubing when you're done. Now, I use that often, but if I have the choice, if I ever have the opportunity to connect my tubing back on itself, I always do that because I feel like it helps with my water flow and my um, the strength of the water. And the way that I laid out this garden bed, I brought it right back to it, the initial spot. So I'm just gonna connect it to itself and that's how I'm going to stop this half inch strip tubing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cut it right where it meets the original spot you want to cut it straight across and then going into my little kit that I have here I'm going to get one of these T couplers okay and so I am just gonna hook this T coupler again very <laughs> difficultly <laughs> Okay, so I just hooked one end to the end of my drip tubing and then I'm going to come here and I'm going to hook the other end right to my existing drip tubing. So I'm just going to cut it and I'm going to connect it. And then I'm going to connect it back to itself. Okay, you guys see that? So, the water is gonna come from underneath the fence and it's gonna come all the way through. It's gonna feed this whole garden bed and it's gonna swoosh all the way around and then it's gonna connect here. So whatever's water is left over is just gonna keep feeding the system. So it's just going to help with the water flow. I think, that's how I think about it. I, you know, I do that, I do this a lot and I think it really does help. I always try and connect it, connect my drip system to each other as much as possible. Because as you add more and more drip tubing, you're depleting the amount of water pressure you have in your system and there is a limit it's going to get to a certain point where you don't have enough water pressure and you have to add a new zone um, so that's something that you have to think about if you have a lot of plants like I do <laughs> now if you have a big house I mean all bets are off you have to have multiple zones and you know and, and do a lot of stuff I have I think six or eight zones is how many how much I have and I think we only use six of them don't don't quote me on that um, but I just try and conserve it as much as possible okay my half inch drip tubing is all done on my side and now what I need to do is I need to go over to my neighbor's side on the other side of the tree and install his half inch drip tubing okay so you can see right here Sorry about the noise if you guys can hear that. There's a gardener with a blower, uh, just a house or two over. But you can see right here, the other day, this is where I stopped my neighbor's drip tubing. I just took one of those figure eight pieces and I slid it on and that's how I, I plugged it just temporarily until I knew I was gonna come and I was going to uh, replace his drip tubing with the new layout that we had. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut before that crimp that I did on that tubing, just because I don't want the tubing to constantly have a crimp, it could be a weak point. Then I'm just gonna come in with my straight coupler and I'm just going to put that onto the half inch tubing he has. I'm gonna take my new tubing and I'm just gonna put it on. just like that. Hopefully you guys can see that. Just like that. <laughs> ah! Horrible filming, sorry. <laughs> Thank you.
to apologize for the filming of this video. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to show such a little thing. And then also with the dappled light in this area, I feel like I, I feel like you guys can't see anything. So hopefully I can verbally explain it enough. <laughs> okay, so I connected my neighbor's drip, existing drip tubing to the new drip tubing with a straight coupler. Then I brought it all the way down and instead of doing a loop on his side, what I did is I teed it off with a T coupler over here. And then I extended it out that way and then stopped it with a figure eight stopper. I don't know the name of these one of those and then over on the other side i brought it this way and then again i stopped it with a figure eight stopper so he is going to water his side and i am going to water my side if it was one side i would have just done a whole big loop around the whole tree but since we have different drip systems this is how i had to do it okay so I've got the half inch drip tubing in, I've got the big drip tubing in. Now I need to come back with the little drip tubing, the quarter inch and all the individual emitters. So a super common question I get is, what emitter goes to what type of plant? How much of an emitter? There are different sizes of emitters. There are, um, well, there's all the way up to four gallon per hour, but there's half gallon per hour, there are one gallon per hour, and there are two gallon per hour. Those are the main sizes that you have. And here's how I think of it. Um, you know, there are so many variables depending on how often you water, how long you water, how hot it is, how, you know, what type of soil you have. If you have sandy soil, things are going to drain more, so you're going to need more water. If you have clay soil, the soil is going to hold on to the moisture, so you're not going to need to water as much. So it's really hard to sit here and say, okay, for this plant, you need this emitter. For this plant, you need this emitter. And this is how long you need to do it. There is no set answer to that. And so that's why it's really hard to answer a question. And I know I had those exact same questions. How long should I, how long should I do it for? How long, you know, uh, how long should I water my plant? How long should I water this type of plant? I had all those questions. So I totally get it. But the answer is it depends. You know what I mean? It's really, really hard to give a straight answer without living in your garden or being super familiar with your garden and knowing all the little nuances. So I'm just going to tell you guys kind of my thought process and how I go through things so that I can think about it. Okay, so first off, I have my drip. Uh, let's see, I, I run my drip about every other day to the really, really hot triple digits. I'll run it every single day. Okay, so that's the first thing I think about. And then the amount of time that I run it for it depends as well too. You know, it can be anywhere from 20 minutes during the winter. Um, sometimes I'll even drop it down to 10 minutes. Uh, and then sometimes I'll even go up to 45 minutes, right? If it's really, really hot, like I said. I have loamy clay soil so it tends to hang on to water it's definitely not sandy soil where the water's going to drain super quickly um, but you know it's not super clay where it's going to hold on to everything and I have to worry about not having good drainage so hopefully that can help you guys a little bit so I kind of you know I think of myself as normal <laughs> but obviously it's just what I'm used to so everybody has their own normal okay so here's how I think about deciding what type of emitters let me turn the camera around and show you guys my little kit now I made this kit myself I went to Home Depot and I bought this little tool kit it's actually meant for tools like screws and stuff like that um, but I just use it for emitter I'm really sorry about the gardener sounds hopefully you guys can't hear that too much all right let me turn the camera around Okay, so here is my emitter kit, my drip kit. I love this thing, I use it all the time. This is from Home Depot. I'll see if I can find the link for you guys or at least something similar. And like I said, I just made this myself and it is, it's just fantastic because all these drips, uh, these emitters, all this, all this equipment comes in these little bags and it's, it's an absolute mess if you don't organize it in some way. Um, so this is the way that I organize it. So I have all my couplers, my um, half inch couplers up here. I have my T couplers, I have my corner couplers, and then I have my straight couplers, which I use the most. This is my punch, uh, my, whole, my whole punch, so you'll see, to put a quarter inch coupler into the half inch tubing, the big tubing, it's really, really hard to get it in. So if you just put this over the half inch drip tubing, um, it'll, it allows it to punch and makes it a little bit easier to get that emitter in. Then I have my figure eight 
stoppers. I really should find out the name of these. And then I have my three size of, sizes of emitters. And okay, so this is, this is how I think about it. If I have a plant that needs low water, if I have a, a drought tolerant plant or a plant that really doesn't like a lot of water. So for instance, most of these, right? They don't like a lot of water. Then I'm gonna use a half gallon per hour emitter. And I like the Rainbird brand simply because, well, partly because you can get it at Home Depot. But then, I don't know if you guys can see that, it has 0.5 gallon per hour written on the side there. And other brands don't do that all the time, which is so annoying. So yeah, so blue is always half gallon per hour when it goes with the Rainbird. And then two gallon per hour is the red, and then one gallon per hour is the black. So if it's a low water plant or a small plant, like a small annual that's not gonna get that big, I will choose, I will start off by choosing a half gallon per hour emitter, okay? If it is a water hungry plant and likes a lot of water and likes to be um, moist, right? Uh, then I will choose a two gallon per hour. So for instance, a hydrangea likes to be really moist or a hibiscus likes to be really moist. So I will choose a two gallon per hour. And then if I have to put two of these to the plant, I will do that, right? So super moist plant, like, like water loving plant, dry plant or small plant. And then if it's anywhere in between, I'll go for the one, right? The one gallon per hour. This is kind of like my go-to. If it is a low water plant, like for instance, my Pugster Budlia, a low water plant, but it's a pretty big shrub. I don't think a half gallon per hour is gonna be enough for that guy. So I'm actually gonna put one gallon per hour on this guy. And then I'm gonna put a half gallon per hour on my sea lavender and my liriope because they're smaller and they need less water this guy needs less water but it's bigger so i hope that makes sense to you guys um but the the key to all of this is you start off with a guess an educated guess as much as you can do and then you watch your plant if your plant looks like it needs water and it's not getting enough water you cut off the half gallon per hour uh, emitter and you put on a one gallon per hour emitter or if everything looks really dry and you've just kind of underestimated the water needs for the whole thing, then you bump up the amount of time or the amount, the frequency of your drip. So you start off with an educated guess and then you adjust accordingly and you're going to have to adjust. That is just part of it. It's not like you did anything wrong. Things change. During the summer, you're gonna need more water. During the winter, you're gonna need less water. Hopefully that, that helps you guys a little bit. I'm just an amateur. This is how I think about it. Um, but I think that the best Thing I can say in this video is that there's no one correct answer for drip. If you have a plant, there's no need to ask like, well, how much water should I give this specific plant? Because there's no answer. You have to play with it and you have to see. Like I said, you can make an educated guess. If it's a drought tolerant plant, go with the half, half gallon per hour emitter. If it's a water loving plant, go with the two gallon per hour emitter, right? Start with that and then look at the plant and see how it's doing and adjust from there. All right, so I have my half inch drip tubing in and now I have to put in my quarter inch drip tubing. So I'm in my garage just so I can show you guys uh, the emitter tubing that I have. I have this giant box of it. You can see how much I use of it. Okay, so quarter inch drip tubing is the same as half inch drip tubing in that we have the black version and we have the brown emitter version. So the black version, is this is the quarter inch size. It has no holes or no emitters in it. So it's just gonna take the water from one place to another place and this is what you use you connect it with the coupler to the half inch the big drip tubing and then you add the emitter on the end this is just lime green just so that you can um or neon green just so that you can see where the end is so i'll just cut that off um, so so uh, this has no emitters to it as opposed to emitter quarter inch drip tubing that does have emitters in it so it has little holes in it and this one has every six inches you can get every six inches every 12 inches Here's one here and then six inches up. Here's another one right here. So you can get six inches, 12 inches. I think you can even get 18 inches depending on how close your, your plants are planted together. I use this stuff all the time. I use it in my cut flower garden bed. I use it with my annuals. I use it when I plant plants pretty close together. This stuff is really great because, you know, it's less use of plastic and it covers, it basically saturates the soil where your plants are um, planted. So it's really, really useful but it's actually 
the opposite of what I need right now for my oak tree garden bed because I am actually trying to conserve water in that area and make it so that we barely use, we use the minimum amount of water in that area. So I'm gonna use this, this quarter inch black tubing that has no holes in it, and I'm gonna extend this off of the big tubing and then add an emitter and put the emitter to every single plant. So each plant gets its own specific emitter and there's no wasted emitters that could be going to nowhere. Hope that makes sense. All right, so let's start with these four plants. I have two plumbagos right there along the fence, and then I have a southern sword fern, and then I have this evergreen that I still don't know the name of. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I, ha I was gonna plant this up by my front door, but I decided on the Wichita blue juniper. So I just moved it over here, and I kinda like it in that spot. I think it's a pretty spot right there, and that's gonna get pretty big, maybe 10 feet tall. Um, so of course, I'll have to move this stuff all around once it grows, but right now, I think it looks pretty there. Okay, so I'm going to put all these four on one line that comes off of the half inch strip tubing. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I, can, I need to connect this quarter inch strip tubing to the half inch strip tubing. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use this quarter inch coupler right here. And I've seen people poke it in with just using their hands. I cannot do that. <laughs> it is way too hard for me. So what I do is I use this little hole punch. I got this at Home Depot. Of course, everything I got at Home Depot. It's just the closest big box store I have. What is that? Garbage. Okay, so all I do is I put it over the half inch tubing like that. And then I just take it and I pop a hole in it. So now there's a hole right here. Let me show you guys. Okay, and you can see this pocket punch thing right here. It poked a hole into this half inch drip tubing. And so now I can take my quarter inch coupler and I can poke it in right there. I always find it easier if I put my tubing on first and that way I have something to kind of hold on to. There we go. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my quarter inch strip tubing and I'm gonna take it to the furthest plant away in my little grouping that I'm doing off of my half inch strip tubing. So I'm just gonna run it all the way over to that evergreen right there. Okay, and then once I'm here, I'm going to end my tubing with an emitter. And because this is an evergreen I'm, and it's pretty big, I think I'm gonna do a one gallon per hour to start off with. I might have to bump it up to two gallon per hour as this thing gets a little bit bigger. But again, this is going to be our starting point. So I'm just gonna take a black one gallon per hour emitter. I'm gonna put it at the end of my tubing and then I'm gonna uh, stake it in right now. Okay, so my evergreen has water. I actually already connected that plumbago up to water as well, but you can see that the drip tubing goes, well, you can't see. The drip tubing goes straight past this plumbago and it doesn't give it any water. So what I have to do is I have to run a line from this line over to the plumbago so it gets water. And the way that I do that is I go ahead and I cut my quarter inch drip tubing and then I get a T coupler like that and I attach it to the quarter inch. And then now I take another piece of my quarter inch strip tubing and I attach it to the third prong on this T coupler. Measure how much length I need, cut it, and then add my emitter. And for the, for the plumbago, I'm just choosing one gallon per hour it's kind of my go-to. And then I just take another one of these landscape staples and I push it in. So I have my tea coupler right here. It goes off, the emitter goes off to the plant and then it continues off this way uh, to continue watering the other plants. And then I just take this and I put it down so it stays down and doesn't pop up out of the mulch. There we go. 
Okay, so that's pretty much it. So you wanna start off with your big tubing, uh, take it close by your plants, and then follow up with your small tubing, your quarter inch tubing, and then have an emitter to each plant. That's if you wanna save as much water as possible, or if you have a few plants. If you have a ton of plants, then you obviously wanna use that emitter tubing that has the emitter in the tubes, so you're not wasting a ton of emitters. So I hope this was helpful. I'm gonna go through right now, and I'm gonna attach all of these new plants up to their very own emitter, because again this is an oak tree garden bed and I'm trying to conserve as much water as possible. Here's another secret to drip irrigation. Uh, it doesn't matter what project you're doing, doesn't matter how big or how small it is, you're gonna run out of supplies. You're gonna run out halfway through, maybe three quarters of the way through, and you're gonna have to take another trip to the hardware store to get more supplies. <laughs> so here I am at the hardware store. I gotta get some more emitters. Okay, so I ended up going to just my local hardware store, not my big box store. And all they had were the Rain Drip brand. And I usually like the Rain Bird brand, but it's okay. It completely is compatible and it'll work. So for the Rain Drip brand, the half gallon per hour, so you look here and it says one half gallon per hour, they are red. Now I do have experience with this brand and I actually don't like it. I found that I had to replace these quite often because they would stop working, but I really don't want to drive all the way <laughs> to Home Depot. I want to finish this project. Um, so I just got what I needed for the rain drip and hope that they, I mean, I'm sure they'll work fine, but basically I wanted to show you guys this. So if you see I'm putting red emitters on, it's not because I'm putting two gallon per hour. It's because I'm using some of the rain Rain drip brand, which is, I think, super confusing. You would think that they could all coordinate and they could have the colors equal the same gallon per hour on the emitters, but they don't. It differs across brands, which I find annoying. All right, I am done. So halfway through, of course I ran out of supplies. It is a given <laughs> that you're gonna run out of supplies. I do it every single time. It doesn't matter how much I purchase, it's never enough. So I had to run to the hardware store and then you know deal with kids getting out of their day camps and all that kind of stuff. So it's in the evening, it's after dinner, it cooled down a little bit and I came out here and I finished everything. You could probably hear my kids in the backyard playing around around, but I wanted to show you guys what I did today. Okay, so first off, this beautiful sunflower has finally completely opened. There's even a little bee on it. There's been bees on it all day, and I have been enjoying the sight as I've walked by here uh, while I've been working. So as I was showing you guys earlier today, I started off with connecting the half inch, the big tube, all the way around here. Sorry about the car. Um, <laughs> all the way around the garden bed, and then off of the half inch tubing, I connected with with a quarter inch coupler, I connected the quarter inch tubing and then took that to each plant and then added an emitter to each plant. All of these plants are drought tolerant plant plants. So most of them only needed the half gallon per hour emitter, except for if it's a big plant like uh, the Pugster Blue Butterfly Bush. I'm considering that as a big plant, so I actually did one gallon per hour to those. I also did one gallon per hour to my plumbago because those are gonna get real big. And I think it needs more water to support that leaf structure. So if you come over here to my neighbor's side, you can actually see it a little bit better because he doesn't have the black mulch yet. They don't have the black mulch. So you can see his irrigation, well, you can't see with the light. I'm gonna move. 
my lens must be dirty, sorry. <laughs> so you, I attached the half inch tubing up here to his existing system and then brought it all the way down here, teed it off and then just branched off again with the quarter inch drip tub tubing to connect to each of the plants. And this is just how you do it. It's how you install drip in an existing drip system. Again, if you wanted to start from scratch, it's a little bit more complicated. And I actually would just recommend getting one of those irrigation contractors you know they're really easy to find you know when I google in my area like five of them pop up so yeah so this is an easy if you already have a drip system this is an easy way to add on to it the one thing as I was connecting all of this that I forgot to tell you guys if you look over here with the half inch drip tubing the way that we end a half inch drip tubing is we use this figure eight connector and fold it in half and then that's how you end a half inch to end a quarter inch we actually don't do that we use something called a goof plug and it just plugs into the end and it's basically like a stopper so to end a quarter inch you can either have an emitter or if you have an end that you don't need water to come out of use the goof plug same thing with the half inch except for with the half inch you use this figure eight thing okay and then i thought the perfect way to celebrate this project being done you guys know what's coming Ta -da! Okay, so I've got the last liriope planted where that sunflower was, and I have my beautiful sunflower that I get to take inside with me and enjoy. And I'm done with the irrigation in this oak tree garden bed. All I have left to do is mulch, and then I'm totally done with this project, which is so exciting. I am so happy with it. I think it's fantastic. It's taken a lot of work, but so worth it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video from an amateur to an amateur or two amateurs on irrigation. Irrigation. Uh, I think the best thing I can tell you guys is that there's no right answer to any of this irrigation. You have to get water from one area to another and it has to be not too much or not too little. And there's no correct answer for anything because every situation is different. So I put all my emitters in. I think I did a pretty good job guesstimating it, but I'm going to be checking it over the next couple weeks, months. You know, I'm just going to keep looking at it to see if I made the right choice with these emitters. And if I have to change them out, it's no big deal. If I have to change the amount of time that I'm uh, irrigating this garden bed it's no big deal that's all part of gardening so let me know if you guys have any questions I'll try and answer them the best I can and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today